YouTube. Welcome back to another edition of Craft Back and Relax. I know, right? Edition. <laughs> but I want to thank you all who left comments introducing yourselves and um, who let me know who your favorite biblical figure is. Saul Paul of the New Testament. He's a favorite and he's my favorite. Who don't like Paul? <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying uh, your summer. And happy summer, by the way. It is warm here in my neck of the woods. Speaking of that, um, last week, my family, we went to the water park. Whew, and let me tell you. Now, I looked forward. I've been there several times already. And I looked forward to really going, you know, having the fun and getting on the slides. I'm not a big fan of roller coasters, but when I go, like, to the the theme parks I'll get on one good ride and call it quits so at the water park I was looking forward to just you know having a chill time really relaxing nothing wild like um, the roller coasters but boy oh boy let me tell you I will never get on a certain water slide again <laughs> oh my goodness the first one was okay but it was in a tunnel and you're on a tube and you go through a tunnel and you're maneuvering. I mean, you're just going everywhere. That was really scary to be in a tunnel. Had I known it was a tunnel, I would not have gotten on that one. But my husband, oh my goodness, he's terrible. He descended from the tunnel without his tube, just head first in the water. And he later told me that he spun a couple times inside the tube. Now the tube is really narrow, so I can only imagine how he just tumbled you know, through that very long tube and into the water. But it was so funny because the next, well, for me the next day, I was sore. <sighs> but he got on another slide and he exited the water. You know, he went in as a 44-year-old man. But I tell you, when he exited out, he was a 90-year-old man because he was all bent over, all in pain. <laughs> and then I got on the slide, the one where you fold your arms and fold your legs never again never ever I promise you never again so we ended the in the lazy river and that's really cool because you just get in your tube and you just float in the river it takes about 15 minutes to go around I think we went around four times so we were in the lazy river for a whole hour really relaxing really cool you know, if you have a waterproof book, it'd be a perfect time to read a book. <laughs> so that's how we started our summer. How have you guys started? Yeah, I was going to talk um, about gifts. Since many of us, we have an inclination to create. And, you know, it's biblical. And I was going to touch on that um, in this video. But in the light of what has happened in North Carolina, I just think it's only befitting that I spend several moments and talk about that. I'm sure you all have heard about it. Um, I'm not a person who watches the news because it's just so much that, you know, goes on. And there are studies that actually show that people who watch the news every night or every day, they have higher blood pressure and they have more health issues. And so the news is just very depressing. So my daughter texted me and asked if I had heard about what happened. I hadn't heard about it, but I got online and looked it up and read about the tragedy that occurred there. And, you know, I had some thoughts about that. Needless to say that I, I prayed for the families. I prayed for, you know, that, that town and that church. And I grieved greatly. I'm a very sensitive person and so when I hear about tragic things that happen it can be in another country you know I whew, I just I don't know I I feel it you know as if perhaps I knew someone who experienced that or a, you know it, it was a family member that's how impressed I am with things that happen you know I was thinking about that after I prayed, after I cried, while I prayed, while I cried, and not to give the devil any glory, because we know that he's, he's behind things that happen like this. And unfortunately, things like this will continue to happen until he is cast 
and to the lake of fire, you know, that place that was made for him. The thoughts that I had about it was, you know, Satan, even in heaven, before he became evil, he was like God's right-hand man. And even there, he wanted to be God, and he wanted to rule where God rules, and God couldn't have that, and so God cast him down to the earth. His next scheme, if I can't rule the heavens, where God rules the heavens, let me rule inside the temple. He can't rule in heaven, but he'll make his way inside the temple to rule from there with fear, you know, with anger and fearful about entering in to the house of prayer. You know, just think about it. There are certain places that we naturally feel safe. First, our homes. You never think about anything terrible happening in your home. Many of us, I, I, I do, well, not all the time, but sometimes, you know, I'll leave my back door unlocked because we feel safe. I was watching Dateline um, last week and I saw what happened to that Washington DC family, a mother, a, a wife, a husband, the maid, and then the 10 year old son just murdered inside their homes. You don't think about bad things happening inside your home. When you're at work, you feel safe there. But we've heard about workplace shootings. So it's not so safe. School, unfortunately, ever since Columbine, you know, we've heard about other school shootings just a couple years ago. What happened at Sandy Hook? Yeah, you know, and there's a scripture what Jesus told his disciples, he said to be as gentle as doves, but be as wise as serpents. And unfortunately, in this day and time, we have to be like that. We have to be careful about who we invite into our homes. We have to be careful about who we invite into our lives. Do you know who your kids' friends are? Especially in this day and age, a lot of kids, they play video games. My son does. And you can connect with anyone in the world through a video game. You have to be careful and you have to monitor, you know, the actions of your children, especially when they're online. Right now, Dateline, they're featuring a series called My Kid Would Never Do That, something like that. You guys, you should check it out. You should watch it. I am telling you. I think they've done three shows already. I had my 10-year-old watch the first episode, and then him and I watched it together. And then I had my husband watch it with him. Please check that out. Have your kids check it out. Watch it with your kids and talk to your kids about safety. Because in this day and age, you can never be too careful when it comes to your children's protection. So unfortunately, you know, we have to pray and watch. But Jesus said to do that. And with what just happened in South Carolina, you know, that scripture, it, it brings new light. It brings a new understanding. You literally, you know, and I hate to say this, you know, but wow, just the thought that you really gotta keep one eye open while you're praying. Now, you don't literally have to do that, but you have to do that. And then now the churches. You know, and I was thinking too, I, though I live in a way in a bubble, and that's because I don't always know what's happening in the news, I'm very careful about not living a detached life. For the most part, no. For all the part, we're blessed here in America. I think it's the greatest nation. So when I say we're blessed, we will never go to the city and see a child who is starving. You know, I mean, when I say starving, I mean with the orange hair, with the big bellies, and skeleton-type bones. We'll never see that in our country. Never. We have never seen that in our generation. Praise the Lord. And so when I say we are blessed, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But with privilege and what 
privilege may mean something different, you know, to you all. We can fall into, you know, a place where we're just detached from what happens to other people. So I guess my question to you would be, how do you guys reach out when you hear about tragedies like what happened in um, South Carolina? You know, what do you do? And I want to offer some tips to you guys, too, on what you can do because it's impossible for many of us to be there physically, but we can still do things to make us feel like, you know what, yeah, I'm grieving with them. I'm not just living this detached life and, you know, my life will go on, but I can show my support in this way or that way. And this is what I do often. Before I saw the news, I make it a habit of reading names and ages. That's what I did at first. After I read the story, I looked for their names and their ages. For me, I pray. I believe prayer changes things. I do believe I pray to a God that hears. And not only hears, he answers. And I'm one that believe that I can't be there physically. You send a prayer because God can cause your prayer to touch someone, to act on your behalf, and you not even know it. So through prayer, you can have someone who can physically be there, and you can't act on your behalf. It's the power of prayer. You can huddle your family together and offer up a family prayer where you call out the victim's names. That makes it personal, you know, when you say your names. You can offer a moment of silence. I was so happy that my pastor did that on Sunday. He offered a long moment of silence. Um, if you have funds, you can always give. Some, you yeah, how? Money, it don't take away pain. But when families are struggling, because many families, unfortunately, don't have burial or life insurance, you know, that money <laughs> helps lighten the load. What you can also do, and this next part is really hard, because it's what broke me down when the news showed the faces. I knew I wanted to see the faces and I had looked for the faces, but the faces weren't, weren't shown like the first day or so. One way of staying attached is to see the faces of those that are no longer here. And once again, that's what broke me down when I saw the 26 year old, they showed several pictures of him on the news and literally his smile was just as big as my arms are stretched wide, full of life, so young. And then I think, you know, I have a child that age. Now, I don't want to get teary-eyed thinking about it now. But we're crafters. We can always make a card and send a card, right? You know, I'll tell you what I did for um, the Sandy Hook victims and their families oh goodness gracious anytime anything happens to kids wow i don't care where you're at in the world when you hear about something terrible happening to kids it's like you just have to pause you know for a minute in my case it was a long minute and think about those kids lives and so what i did was i printed out every one of their pictures and I was going to actually share this with, I think it was the second anniversary last year or the third, I don't remember, but I missed the anniversary. So the Lord say the same, I will share what I created with the upcoming um, anniversary during the holidays. But I printed out every one of their pictures, including the teachers, and I used a Sizzix die. It was the gingerbread house. And I also printed out their bio and I took different colors of the gingerbread house put their picture on it 
and I forgot where I put the bio. But anyway, I made a long banner, kind of like my donut mania and my mason jar mania. I made a long banner, so you can imagine, I think 26 kids died, plus staff. So you can imagine how long the banner was. And I took it to church. We have our Awanos on Wednesday nights, and so we had a big wall. I put it on the wall, and I had the kids. We took a moment of silence, and all the children went to the wall, looked at their faces, said their names, and read their bios. And then our commander, she took a picture of all of us in front of the wall that had the kids' pictures on it, and she sent it in with cards that we had made to um, those at Sandy Hook. And that's how I remembered, and that's how I did the little part that I could do, because I couldn't physically be, be there. That's how we did our part. So how do you guys, what do you do? Or do you feel helpless, like there's nothing you can do? Share your tips with somebody that needs to go to change the tune a bit. Check how big this rose is. Huge. So it's bigger than Dynamics Rose Bouquet. It's bigger than Paper Tray Ink Sweet Life. And who else do I have roses by? It's the largest. I mean, it's huge. And this set comes with three different flowers. And you get two, layery, two layers per flower. So I cannot wait to play with this one. It looks like this one might be easy to, um, to layer as well. So let me give you guys a sneak peek. I had mentioned that I wanted to do a mason jar full of flowers, right? Well, this is what I'm working on. <laughs> Real quick, just a sneak peek. <laughs> I will do a separate video when I have this mason jar full of flowers. By the way, I wasn't thinking of this type of setup. I wanted to have like, these are on popsicle sticks, different sizes. I didn't envision the popsicle sticks, but I thought this was cute because now I can always look at this. I'm going to find a, you know, a nice space in my real cluttered craft room to put this so I can always look and I can have inspiration. But yeah, you're looking at maybe five different sets. I'll show you one more time. It's about five different sets and aren't they gorgeous? I'm like, oh my goodness, I just absolutely love them. I got about six more sets to go, so <laughs> so happy I'm learning how to layer. Now, what else I have made? Okay, but for Father's Day, I helped my son make one for my husband. And are you guys ready to see how it looks? I'm going to do a separate video on this one too because I'm not sure what all or how the video will pick this up. But this is the one made for my husband. I want it to go masculine. His favorite colors are Laker colors, so purple and yellow. But the purple was too girly. <laughs> and I didn't have any yellow. I mentioned that in my last video. I think it came out super cool. Let me talk about it for a second because you don't see any sequins right there. I didn't know if I wanted to do the sequins like I did in the first one. So it ended up where I couldn't put sequins down here because I had already layered my smaller elements. But that's really cool because my husband is bald headed, right? And so this is bald right here. So it kind of reminds us of him. <laughs> so that worked out perfectly. And um, so here I use some of the black word beads. And these word beads describe my husband. Funny, wild, loud. And down here is super. Now that's there for a reason. Because if you look at this, this leather trim that's hanging is supposed to be like a cape. Right? And it's supposed to be flying. Because this, this is a special type of S. This is not a feminine S. And so it has that like super feel to it. So you have the the lace, this is not lace, but the leather trim like in the air and he's super dad because <laughs> it's spelled, don't it spell dad somewhere? 
Oh my good. Oh yeah, it does. Right here. It spells dad. So and there is super. And he's gonna hang this in his office at work. Okay, you guys, so I stopped buying stickers. I don't know when. It's been a couple years, maybe three. Because I just have so many stickers and hardly use them. But I'm back buying stickers. <laughs> Last week, Joann's had their 60% off coupon. You know, and sometimes I'll just go in a craft store, not buy anything because it's therapeutic, or I'll buy something really cheap. I will spend, I tried yesterday to spend a coupon on something that cost a dollar, but it was already on, no, yeah, it was already on sale. And so, people, <laughs> I'm going to share some tips in the next segment <laughs> on what you can do to curb spending, especially if you have what, what I had, that hoarder syndrome. I got some tips to share with you guys. But yeah, I'm back buying stickers, but not just any kind of stickers. These stickers are within my four categories because I'm trying to, not trying, but I'm actually doing it. I'm spending the bulk of what I spend on crafting with things that represent me. Check out this sticker set by Jolie. It's pertaining to the garden. Now I spent like a day looking for a die that will enable me to create a garden bed I think I found a stamp that I probably can use, but this was so cute when I saw this. These are 3D stickers. I have to figure out how I can recreate these images. So I used a coupon, a 60% off coupon. I think it was $4, so 60% off that. I got this one. Then I picked up this one because it is summertime. It's picnic time. Watermelon is my favorite summer fruit. I have one in there right now I need to cut up. But once again, 3D stickers. And then I picked up this one. Super duper cute. Look at the cookies and the pan, the pie, the apron. I will go back and get another one of those. Now let me share with you guys something I found at the thrift store, right? This is not the item that you're going to laugh at. <laughs> That's coming up next. But I found this. It was brand new. I paid two bucks for it. It's magnetic. And so I just keep little notes here. It came with these little magnetic circles. So that was two bucks. Brand new in the same packaging. But wait until you see this next item. Okay, are you guys ready? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> it's heavy. Oh my goodness. This, I don't know if it's yarn. I don't know what it is. But it is a huge spool not even a spool there it's just all yeah it's a spool on the inside oh it's heavy hurt my wrist but it's a huge roll of this can be twine it's double as a matter of fact double twisted string it's that heavy duty type stuff so I don't know what it is but whatever it is it is a lot of it I don't know how many hundreds of yards this is, but I paid 10 bucks for this. <laughs> Felicia, what are you going to do with all that? Well, I tell you, this is going to last me a lifetime. What I plan on doing is taking off the layer that's dirty. So I've been doing that already. I just have to do this up here. And because it's an ivory color, I can dye it. I can use my sprays to dye it any color. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I have enough of it to use to do whatever I'm going to do with it. So yeah, $10. <laughs> and you know guys, the last couple weeks I've been thinking about how scrapbooking has transformed and how it's evolved. Because scrapbooking is really, it, it's fairly new. Now when I say new, 
I understand it's been around for decades. And I remember as a child watching an infomercial of a woman who was selling scrapbooking kits. You guys might remember that. She had paper, an assortment of stickers. They even had die cuts. I don't remember. But anyway, it was like 30 bucks for the whole collection. My mom never got it. <laughs> but I've been thinking how when I first started crafting, it was in 2004. And Costco was my corporate because like I shared in my last video, I got all these self-inking stamps from Costco. Shout out to Mama Crafts. She mentioned that she got her, her uh, scissor set. Mine's in the garage. I was going to bring it in. I might pause this video and bring that in. You know. Okay, so mine's is heck of dusty. <laughs> I keep it in the garage. But I purchased two of these and um, they were both different shapes. But yeah, this is, you could get things like this back in the day from Costco. And this was like under 20 bucks because Costco has the best deals available. But anyway, um, it was 2004 and I started buying all these things from Costco because I was in Costco all the time. Um, and then I delved into, because I didn't know how to necessarily use this stuff, like these self-inking stamps led me into rubber stamping and then the different techniques and then you know with embossing and resist was really big back then i don't hear about a lot of resist today but anyway i have been thinking about when i started crafting and i'm so happy i was a part or i experienced the whole transformation because i remember walking into michael's i had no clue what this was i don't recall seeing these in school Right, I don't know where I was. But a customer explained to me how you use this. So of course I started buying the Sizzix dies and I got the Sizzix machine, you know, the one, um, that real heavy one. But see back then in Michaels, they didn't have Spellbinder dies, right? They had a lot of stickers, they had Sizzix. I think Sizzix was the only die cutting machine they had back then. But it was so funny, in 2005 or early six, I had a dream about a revolutionary <laughs> machine, right? It was a die cutting machine. And then one day I walk into Michael's and lo and behold, there is a representative, she's demoing the cricket. I was like, this is deja vu, I dreamt of this. Now, back in the day, home-based crafters, they didn't have digital uh, die cutting machines only businesses that specialized in vinyl cuts they had those kind of machines and so i remember the fascination with the baby bug when it came out there was a lot of hype i still have my original cartridges like new arrival and animal kingdom and paper pups and the tags and bags and boxes right i remember when i got my baby bug home by the way back then you were able to use your coupon because they didn't have all these coupon restrictions. You could use your coupon on cartridges and on the machines. But I remember when I got it home, in five minutes, I was literally set up and I was die cutting. And to watch that blade move, I don't recall a lot of things, but I remember this. I saw that blade moving with precision and accuracy, cut out shapes and letters. Even my kids were in awe. The cricket was all the rave, and the cricket ruled for, you know, a good number of years. But nothing, in my opinion, has hit the market that gave me that thrill and all that excitement like when the cricket hit the market. It's kind of like if you grew up in my generation, Michael Jackson was all the rave. I mean, people would faint when you... I remember seeing on TV the, the, the fans screaming and crying. I mean, it was such a mania. Many superstars don't achieve what he achieved. Kind of like Elvis and the Beatles. Experiencing that was like, there's no Elvis today. There's no Michael Jackson today. So you don't have people, at least I don't see fans falling out for superstars like they did for Michael, Elvis, and the Beatles. I kind of feel like that with the cricket. <laughs> Nothing has made me fall out. <laughs> I 
I know the Cricut has had successive machines and other companies have come up with their machines, but nothing, I miss that. Nothing has fascinated me like the Cricut did. Back then, the Cricut message board was booming. I couldn't wait to get home and find out what Sister Longneck was talking about. <laughs> you know? It was just so, by the way, have you guys heard they're shutting down the message board? Well, that's long overdue. They should have been shut that down because, you know, cricket don't rain anymore. But I miss all the anticipation that the scrapping world had to offer. Back then, we didn't have Tim Holtz. You know, we didn't have Anna Griffin. She wasn't in crafts. Martha Stewart was in Kmart. She wasn't in Michaels. You know, I don't know who we had back then. <laughs> We didn't have We Are Memory Keepers. I think they were one of the first companies I remember, you know, that hit the market. But yeah, Tim Holtz, they're fairly new to this whole scrapbooking game, though they've been around for a minute now. But do you guys feel the same way? If you're new to crafting, maybe everything excites you. So I'm really speaking to people who were, you know, crafting before Cricut hit the market. <laughs> Like Spellbinders, you have all these different companies. They specialize in paper thin or wafer thin uh, dye, dyes. But Spellbinders was here first. I remember that. I think that's why it took me such a long time to delve out there and buy other manufacturers' dyes because I only knew Spellbinders and I only trusted Spellbinders. Truth be told, within the last year, that's when I began buying other manufactured dyes because I was, you know, in this whole game when it was only Spellbinders. Now you have a gazillion of other wonderful, might I add, manufacturers. But yeah, I just miss that whole experience. Crafting is fun, but it's not as fun as it was. Remember when HSN did all the cricket? They still do cricket, but when Ginger was on HSN... People used to miss work, and many people still do, but people used to miss work to see what Cricut was going to launch or to check out what Ginger was wearing. I mean, that was a time when the girlfriends got together, and though HSN didn't offer the 24-hour crafting, what they did offer was good enough. It was a thrill. It, there was always anticipation before the shows aired. A lot of talk after the shows aired and I'm sure that still goes on and Cricket did the right thing by bringing on Anna Griffin because I think she's the reason why they're still alive today <laughs> you know that was very smart but I miss the ginger days how do you feel I know Anna Griffin she draws in that same anticipation I, I think it might be a different crowd you know, because Anna Griffin, she specialized in everything pretty. Ginger probably had cricket. My, my, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I just miss it. But I had one of those moments the other day. Um, I was in my room, my craft room crafting. And I went to my craft channel. I hadn't visited them in like a couple months. I don't know why, because I love my craft channel. But I decided to head over there and I played some of Teresa Collins videos by the way if you don't know what my craft channel is it's a site that you go to and they have like different daily shows like Anna Griffin not Anna Griffin but Teresa Collins and Heidi Swap they do a weekly video and so they have their own show there and other companies like Fiskars I think they have about 10 active shows that they offer right now but anyway I headed over there and I played some of Teresa Collins uh, videos she has like 13 seasons with my craft channel so I was in my craft room crafting and listening to her and it was just really fun it made me it brought back those feelings that I had from back in the day when I was just so excited about cricket and about what else new was going to hit the market by the way you guys if you have been looking and waiting for the Heidi Swap dies my store still don't have these so your, a lot of stores probably don't have them. I looked out when they first hit joanne.com and I got on 50% off plus 20% off. But my craft channel, they have the bundle. You can pick up all seven of these dies 
for $40. And I believe that includes shipping because usually they offer like a daily bundle of some sort. They still had some of these left over. I saw it yesterday. But that's a really good price because 7 goes into 40. You're paying, 7 times 6 is 42. You're paying a little under $6. Did I do that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good price, you guys, if you have been looking for um, these dies. But yeah, I just miss the thrill of what the market has to offer. I don't think anything can hit the market that will take me back to what I felt back when the cricket came out. When did you guys start crafting? How many years you got in the game? <laughs> and let me know what experience you know you had that brought about like your turning point in scrapbooking. For some of you, it might be the meat machine that just hit the market. You know, it could be rubber stamp embossing. It could be embossing folders. I don't know what it is. I'm surprised to hear that many of you don't have um, die cutting machines. That was kind of shocking to me. Nothing wrong with it, you know, but hey, the market is still open for manufacturers to, you know, win you over. But do you guys also remember when you were able to watch crafting shows on TV, even the reruns, the year I started watching, and it's been about five, maybe five, six years now, that's when everything, they just ceased playing. Do you remember Crafters from Coast to Coast? Loved that show, right? I want to find that on DVD. Do you recall the show, and I don't remember the name of her show, but she had tattoos, loved her show she would bring on guests. Um, and then the older woman, her name could have been Carol. I'm thinking of Carol Burnett, but it's not her. I can't think of her name, but she would have some live shows, but she was very artsy and she would make things right on her show, miss her show. And then there was another show with a male and a, a female. They would come on and they would make things. As a matter of fact, she was on HSN a couple years ago probably even more recent than that, she invented um, the glue gun helpers. You can get a silicone mat, but then you have the fingertips. You put them on so you don't burn yourself. That's who I'm talking about. If you know who I'm talking about, that's her. <laughs> but, oh, scrapbook memories. <laughs> yeah, they used to come on uh, TV. Now, in some areas, I think they might come on PBS. They don't come on my PBS station. And by the way, you can check them out. They air their, their show, their new shows, you know, for a whole week. So you can check that out. But I used to watch back when it was Beth and Julie. And then Beth left and then the, the new Julie came on. Now it's just the new Julie by herself. And so I think her shows focus more on mixed media. And I checked her show out the other day. But I really loved it, you know, back in the day when it used to come on TV. And I hate the idea that... I can't find anything crafty on TV, except if they're still airing this show. We switched to Comcast several months ago, and so I have to find the country channel. Have you ever heard of the Junk Junk Gypsy Sisters? What is it called? Junk Gypsies, I think. Love the show. It's two sisters. It's a family-based business, but it's primarily two sisters. They visit junkyards, antique fairs, and they can transform a piece of junk into a beautiful work of art, into furniture. They redesign, you know, whole rooms. I love the show. I got in, I think, on their first season last year. I need to look it up and find that channel. Because, to my knowledge, if they're still airing, that's the only craft show that I know of. Do you guys know of any craft shows that are airing on TV? It, please let me know. If you know how to get a copy of Crafters Coast to Coast and those other art shows and I don't recall the name or craft shows, please let me know. I know you can get Scrapbook Soup. And you know what? I just might order their older editions because it's kind of like childhood. When you want to revisit childhood, <laughs> you go to your childhood home if you still have it. You make those recipes. You pull out those albums. 
So you can go back in the day. I'm kind of like that right now when it comes to crafting. I, I just kind of want to go back in the day. It was really fun back then. And I'm looking for a way to... I'm still excited, but I don't know. It's changed a whole lot. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> well, let me know when you guys started crafting. And what was that exciting moment that you had? So I want to do something with this edition that I did not do in my first edition. And I want to pray. Yeah, I'm a person of prayer. Uh, yeah. And maybe in one of these sessions I'll talk about prayer. Because I think we have a misconception of prayer. You know, we got to be in a certain position. we got to come to God with certain words. It's not like that at all. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll share with you what my prayer life consists of. Um, but I do want to close it out with, you know, a prayer. Yeah, many of you probably don't pray. I was shocked. I, I had a pastor friend, and he pastored for um, 30 years, and he went through a divorce. So he's no longer a pastor, but he shocked me when he told me he did not really have a prayer life. And I'm like, how can you be a pastor and you don't have a prayer life? So I'm not trying to insult anyone. That was just... A shock to me that he was a pastor and he really didn't have a prayer life because to me prayer especially for a pastor you know that's like the the nucleus of what you do you pray my pastor always prays as a matter of fact he, he'll have a 5 a.m. prayer in a minute <laughs> I love 5 a.m. prayers I was up the other night at 4 30 well, I didn't pray till 5, but I love those moments like that. But you don't have to pray that early. Yeah, so I want to just offer up a prayer. So whoever so will can join in with me as I pray. Father God, the creator of the heavens and the universe, the creator of everything that is good, the one who gave his only begotten son for our redemption, Lord, for our promises that is who I pray to the one who have eyes the one who has ears the one who could hear this prayer and I believe your word your word is true that if we come to you and we believe that you are who you say you are and that you will answer you will answer father God I want to thank you for the youtubers who are a part of this prayer right now father God and it is my prayer that they would know you and come to know you even more. That they would know you as the father that you are. Father's Day just passed the other day, Lord, but you are our father. You have been better to us than a father, even the best earthly father could be, Father God. And you love us with a love that's unmeasurable, with a love that we can't even speak of. And I just pray right now that you would touch those that, are, that have ears, that hear. Father God, that you would touch them where they need to be touched. Whatever healing that needs to take place, Father God, whether it be mental healing, emotional healing, physical healing, Father God, that you would touch them right now with the power of your love and press upon their hearts, Father God. That they know that there is a God in this world who is alive, that who loves them, protects them, and takes care of them. And let them know that they can bring any thought, any feeling before you, Father God. Because you feel for them and you care about them. I thank you for this prayer, Lord. And as always, we remember not just, Lord, not just those in South Carolina, but those that are across the face of this world who don't have voices, who cries we don't hear, who faces we don't see, Father God. And we ask and pray for mercy. For mercy, Father God. For mercy. In the name of Jesus, we ask this. And amen.
thank you guys. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this whole thing here. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. And until the next edition, Craft Back.